I've coached everybody on how they need to talk and express themselves. Like whether you're the CEO of the establishment or the institution or someone who's working the lowest part of the totem pole, your words still have an impact on the situation, whether you realize it or not. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. You know, whether it's cleaning the house or whether it's, um, you know, making progress somewhere else, it's like, that's what calms me. That's what soothes me. And I know that about me. So it's like, in this situation, it was, okay, get ready for my next interviews. I've got eight in one day on mm -hmm. Thursday of next week. So it's like, I literally will, yeah, all back to back. And so it's like, I will prepare my ass off for it mm -hmm. and let this one go. I reached out to her already. I emailed her, I called her today. I'll let it go from there and see what happens. But yeah. my mind has already let that go. Do you have a cap? In terms of what? Like for interviews, things you can get done in one day. Because for me, I know each conversation that I have, there's a, there's a chance these interviews could run for two hours when it comes to me and the stuff I do here. Right. right? And one day I booked four interviews. Let me tell you something. By the third two-hour conversation, we were at an hour and 20 minutes, I was like, all right, that's my cap. Yeah. Like, for to put out quality product, I can't book four interviews in one day. Three is my cap. If, I, if I'm able to keep each interview to, like, an hour and some change, I could give myself a half hour between each interview to myself, but I can't talk to anybody. Like, yeah. Like, it just has to be oh, me yeah. sitting down cooling, but, like... Do you know what your cap is capacity wise? Because like, unfortunately, you're good at what you do. I'm not worried about that. But there's a certain amount of is your quality falling off a cliff after like, let's say that sixth to seventh interview in the day, having eight interviews it, for the whole day. It did when I had eight interviews last time and the mm -hmm. last two guys, I was so mentally drained and I thought I completely screwed it up with them. And it turns out that they said mm -hmm. to the group. They they grilled me. they grilled my ass and like they didn't laugh they didn't do anything yeah and uh, and it turns out that they said later they're like that's the guy you mm -hmm. know and it was like but in this case you know it'll be from nine to noon mm -hmm. and then a lunch interview mm -hmm. with two people yeah so and every thirty minutes I talk to someone new that's not bad if that's it's not bad. one if it's one person but every yeah. thirty minutes yeah. I, now there's going to be a lot of me repeating myself, yeah. <laughs> but wow. you know, but yeah. it's like at the same time, yeah. it's like, I am fortunate that it is, these folks are now at the point where they look at my resume they know I can do the work. They're trying mm -hmm. to figure out if they want to work with me. Yeah. So it's a lot more social than it was the, the five before that. Mm -hmm. So it's like. I, I can I can get through it. Like I'm not I'm not worried about that yeah. in, in that situation. It's when if it, if it were if this were a round table and there were eight people sitting around and just grilling me for four hours, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I people, need a, I need a snack. People critiquing you in silence as you're having a conversation with one person at a table of eight. That's anxiety inducing. It is. Yeah. It is. That's anxiety it inducing. Is. It is. It's, a, it's intense. Especially each time someone writes something on their notes in front of you. Why'd you have to write something on your notes, man? What are you, what are you writing? <laughs> what are you writing? Yeah. That's when you just got to be a racehorse and you just put on the blinders. Yeah. Like, uh, you, you've seen me the way I handle myself at work on yeah. the 14th. I'm very much... It'll be very rare that people actually see me have an honest reaction to something wild that's happening on that side. And that's all on purpose. Because there's nothing... Your reaction to the extreme isn't going to benefit you when it's time to discuss what has happened. Especially... That's a good point. Our job isn't to influence what's happening. Our job is to mitigate on that side. Right. And just lower the possibility of Well, that's what a good person in your position mm -hmm. does. Not everyone does that. Yeah. Some people are looking for beef. Mm -hmm. And they're looking they for yeah. they're looking for a problem. I was there, you know, when I saw you th the other night and you weren't right there and I'm I'm not going to like snitch on someone but this you. woman puts her heels up on 
the pool table mm -hmm. and she's scratching it as she's doing it you know trying to make some crazy shot and i just wanted to be like show some respect like what are you what are you doing yeah. like you know like that type of stuff oh, like, man. I don't know. <laughs> but you guys run a good shop so i've i've coached everybody on how they need to talk and express themselves like whether you're the ceo of the establishment or the institution or someone who's working the lowest part of the totem pole your words still have an impact on the situation whether you realize it or not and technically speaking once you're at work you are powered by the establishment right you may not feel that way but you still are so you are that's why they're more inclined to listen to what's going on when i speak because it's like he's always handled it the right way and the right way isn't the way that they would handle it. The right way is usually the way that they would have never thought to handle it. That's the better version. Well, that's called leading from the front. Yeah. That's, that's leading by example, which is, all right, this guy handles it correctly. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to take on that narrative and to, to do it that way. Yeah. You know, whereas when you get the aggressive guys who are just looking for problems, like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, every nail looks like it needs a hammer then mm -hmm. people are going to use that hammer every time yeah yeah no screwdrivers all hammers yeah yeah <laughs> so within this realization when it comes to your therapist do you feel yourself emotionally disconnecting from what you're not receiving for her on your new journey yes. of trying to figure out all right who's next yeah